show you the recommendation of the ELS uh, for follow-up. Uh, this is a recommendation where uh, proposed by a committee, uh, working committee, uh, to make uh, this uh, kind of uh, guidelines uh, feasible in all country in Europe. And uh, for sure, the follow-up is part, is a crucial part uh, of, the, your, of the care of your patient for uh, many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, the evaluation of treatment response, the early identification of recurrence, early detection of new primary tumors, uh, monitoring and management of complications. Uh, optimization of the rehabilitation, and also education of the patient in terms of proportion to, to stop smoking and drinking, uh, uh, provision support of patient uh, and uh, family, uh, patient counseling and education. What means, what means that you have to communicate, uh, to advise the patient about some, uh, we call a red flag uh, symptom, just to uh, anticipate uh, or, or earlier detect uh, some uh, red flag symptom. So <clears throat> the response usually is evaluated uh, after at least three, six months. Uh, it's important uh, to point out uh, that uh, in, uh, in the injured cancer, most of the recurrence occur in the first two years. And of course, we have to, to think about also the secondary, primary, and metachronous tumor. So this is a recent paper that I wrote two years ago that showed that uh, uh, all the uh, recurrence of patient treated by TLM for uh, T3 glottic cancer, selected T, T glottic and supraglottic cancer, are concentrated uh, in the first two years. So you can see a significant difference between uh, supraglottic and uh, glottic cancer. The majority are represented by uh, tumor located in the glottic uh, region. We have uh, only one uh, recurrence in uh, uh, supraglottic uh, area. The follow-up uh, is depend uh, uh, which stage is the, the lesion, but uh, usually for uh, early lesion, uh, uh, in the majority of the case, uh, the clinical uh, examination uh, is uh, sufficient. Uh, by contrast, uh, when uh, you have uh, more advanced cases of patient treated uh, with uh, multimodality uh, treatment uh, as uh, radiotherapy or chemo red, uh, we have always to combine uh, endoscopy with uh, imaging in terms of uh, CT scan, HIMAR, or uh, uh, PET ultrasonography. <coughs> and regarding the endoscopy, must be always uh, uh, done uh, um, evaluating all the upper higher digestive uh, tract, and of course the most accurate, uh, as uh, we have seen uh, in the last uh, two days, uh, uh, the, the, the best uh, way to explore this patient is the combination of narrow band imaging with uh, higher definition uh, uh, technology. Uh, regarding the advanced tumor, of course, the patient uh, has a risk uh, for uh, uh, life longer, so must uh, follow for more than uh, five years. So usually, we stop uh, our follow-up uh, within the five years. So it's important for uh, uh, many reasons, but also for uh, uh, restriction, economic restriction, to select the, the, the kind of uh, uh, um, follow-up uh, uh, you have to perform. Uh, so we need uh, probably two different uh, policy of follow-up dividing the, the, the tumor in low risk category and high risk category. Regarding the, the laryngeal cancer, uh, the T1A and B 
uh, uh, a T1, they hold the T1 2, that means the T2 with uh, mucosa spreading, uh, with negative margin, must be included in the low risk category. That means that probably in this case you don't need to combine endoscopy and imaging, but the the, uh, only the um, endoscopy with uh, MBI uh, and uh, high definitions is enough. By contrast, uh, we include in high risk uh, category the uh, T2 with uh, transcommissural extension, that means uh, with a cranio extension from the supraglottis to the subglottis, that represent probably the worst category in the early glottic cancer. And uh, also the T2 with impairment of the, vo the, uh, the mobility, that means uh, that uh, you have already infiltration of the paraglottic space. Uh, of course, uh, Treated uh, patient already treated uh, with uh, uh, radiotherapy or chemo red, the advantage steady, uh, st uh, stages, uh, and uh, the patient heavy smoker and uh, alcohol user, of course, uh, with uh, unclear margin after uh, uh, the operation. And in these cases, uh, it is mandatory to combine always uh, uh, endoscopy plus. Uh, uh, imaging because you have to combine the information coming from the superficial evaluation where the endoscopy represents the gold standard with some information about the deep extension toward the visceral spaces of the laryngeal rework uh, evaluated by imaging. Here some example of uh, low risk uh, uh, mm, uh, tumors. Again, uh, what is the role of MBI? Again, the, the early detection on lesion that uh, with uh, white light uh, <coughs> you cannot uh, really uh, well evaluate it. I mean, uh, after today your imaging, uh, you can recognize uh, also in white light uh, some uh, atypical vascular uh, uh, pattern, but uh, of course uh, with uh, the announcement of MBI, you can better define, uh, earlier detect uh, this kind of uh, uh, recurrence, uh, superficial recurrence. Uh, again, uh, you is important because uh, in these cases it's feasible to retreat the patient uh, with a second TLM, evaluating the, uh, uh, the superficial spreading uh, again. Uh, uh, to better define uh, the, the margin uh, of the lesion to, um, in, uh, to uh, plane uh, in more precise uh, way your uh, uh, resection, endoscopic resection. Uh, this is another example of a recurrence uh, of the right vocal cord uh, with erythroplasia. My gain uh, with uh, the MBI, you can appreciate uh, uh, and different spreading, a wider spreading of the lesion uh, toward the ventricle, the floor of the ventricle, and also the uh, <coughs> uh, posterior extension. Anyway, it's the same things that uh, we have seen uh, yesterday. So many adjunct information about uh, the uh, superficial extension of the lesion and also the possibility to early detect uh, some suspicious uh, area, uh, have uh, some uh, uh, optical information in terms of uh, optical biopsy. These are some cases. Uh, uh, this is a case uh, treated uh, in uh, the uh, four years ago, 2012. Uh, this is an uh, evaluation in, in the office, of course. Uh, with endoscopy, you can evaluate also the mobility. And uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the case uh, uh, treated in 2012. So small echoplakia. Uh, I perform uh, probably type 1, yes, subepithelial uh, cordectomy because uh, there was uh, no any, any uh, 
uh, a typical vascular pattern, complete balloon, the uh, mucosal wave was preserved, but uh, after four years of follow-up, the mobility was still good, but uh, we MBI, we we, we, we saw some, uh, uh, some disarrangement of the vascularity, uh, some atypical pattern appears in the uh, right vocal cord, especially in the anterior part, and uh, uh, the recurrence was, was confirmed by the histology. <coughs> this uh, uh, is another uh, uh, case detected very early by MBI, this is uh, during the follow-up, uh, we appreciate this uh, anterior uh, retroplachia <coughs> in the anterior commissure and uh, uh, shifting from uh, wild light to MBI, you can better appreciate the synechia due to the previous ventr uh, ventriculectomy. It's some change in the anterior commissure, so this is enough uh, to put the patient uh, in uh, um, in uh, OR, in microangioscopy, and uh, to evaluate uh, much better uh, with uh, the rigid telescope the area. And immediately, uh, you have uh, more edited information, and of course, uh, your, uh, the suspect of the recurrence was confirmed by the final histology and the resection. So you have the possibility to retreat uh, with the second uh, TLM uh, early recurrence, so it's important to detect very early uh, to avoid the, the possibility to retreat uh, in a conservative wave uh, the recurrence. And this is another way how, how you can uh, use uh, the MBI. This is a, just a simple echoplakia, as we have seen yesterday, probably. And we didn't treat this patient. We just followed the patient because we didn't find any suspicious uh, uh, vascular atypia in the lesion. The mucosal way was preserved. Uh, so we decided just to wait and see the patient for a long time. And after uh, four years, the lesion will remain the same without any change. So you can use the MBI not only to evaluate the patient already treated, but also to avoid any unuseful or unnecessary treatment if there is any change in the macroscopic appearance of the lesion. So you know that there is a leukoplakia, but the leukoplakia doesn't change. Uh, it doesn't get to worst, so it's enough just to change the, the, the patient, to educate the patient to stop smoking maybe, or to stop drinking, uh, or maybe some uh, uh, drugs for the reflux and so and so. Dr. Perini, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, your videos on the flexible scope, you have a very good view of the anterior commissure region, which is better than when, when uh, what I do, better than me, when I am standing in front of the patient. Yeah, because I stay describe. behind the patient. Can you just describe that briefly for us? Yes, uh, I, 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 I learned <laughs> to do this from the bronchoscopy. Mm. So, uh, so it, is, uh, I, I, feel, mm, I feel better to, to stay behind the patient because uh, you have the visualization as in uh, uh, microlaryngoscopy and uh, also it's more comfortable. Uh, I, uh, I invite always the patient to <laughs> see the monitor because uh, uh, it's easier to collaborate uh, with him. Uh, for instance, I said, look at the lesion, uh, don't stop breathing, uh, I said, hey, in the right moment. So the compliance uh, of the patient uh, is uh, higher. But uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, up to you. But uh, in my experience, uh, it's better to stay behind the patient. And uh, in this way, it's more comfortable to, to see the monitor uh, for you and for the patient. And uh, also the direction on the scope is more uh, physiologic respect to, to stay in front. So 
Um, I learned that from you a few years ago, and I've started doing it for the anterior commissure, where it's very difficult. To, sometimes it's hard to see. I come around behind the patient, and you. Is there? Is there? Yeah. If you look at the bronchoscopy, the bronchology they do always from behind the patient. This is a recent paper that we wrote in Genoa. We, we divide this cohort of uh, around 130 patients uh, uh, with uh, T2 and T3 glottic cancer. And we divide uh, the cohort in two groups, high risk and low risk. Uh, we include in the high risk uh, T2 with impairment of the vocal cord uh, or transmissory extension and T3 when we talk of T3 treated by TLM, uh, we uh, limited the T3 with paraglottic space involvement without fixation of the vocal cord of the arytenoid and without erosion of the laryngeal framework. These are my indication for TLM. And in the low risk, we put only the T2 with a superficial spreading without involvement of the visceral spaces. So in the uh, low risk group, we perform just an endoscopy for follow-up. In a high risk uh, group, we combine always endoscopy and imaging, even if the endoscopy was negative. So we follow the patient and we schedule always imaging after six months, after 12 months. Six months. Yeah, yeah. What, what it was it MR or CT? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, in this way, we uh, have a detection in the high risk group earlier compared to the low group after uh, uh, 14 months. And we can uh, make uh, equal or comparable the organ preservation. Uh, in terms of 81% compared to 89%. And this was an idea because uh, we found in the previous uh, paper that uh, the organ preservation in the high risk uh, uh, group was uh, no more than 70. That means the older recurrences were treated uh, with a total laryngectomy because uh, the problem is that after after uh, uh, TLM is uh, very frequent, uh, about uh, 43%, to have submucosal recurrence, not detectable with uh, the endoscopy. So what uh, happened that uh, we have a normal endoscopy, but uh, unfortunately we detect the, the uh, recurrence only by indirect uh, clinic sign, like fixation of the vocal cord or but it was too late because it was already T4. So we perform a total laryngectomy. So from the data, we decided to perform, to plan uh, always uh, imaging, even if the endoscopy was negative. This is the reason that uh, uh, I showed yesterday in the paper of Isabel Villaseca, the false negative are related to the possibility to have the recurrence submucosally. This happens very often also after radiotherapy or chemo red. You can see that uh, in this way, we have an upstaging of 77% in the high risk group and uh, the recurrence uh, of uh, 41, uh, uh, only upstaging after endoscopy of 41%. So we have uh, a higher, um, uh, the uh, upstaging in the high risk uh, combining uh, imaging and uh, uh, higher uh, um, recurrence rate uh, with uh, only endoscopy in the low risk group. So uh, in uh, the high risk uh, um, uh, is important to, to keep in mind that after TLM around 40% of recurrence as submucosal. This is a very important message to keep in mind. And uh, in these cases, uh, when uh, you perform a very wide uh, endoscopic recession, I suggest you 
to planar waste imaging at least after six months and the second after 12 months uh, before uh, sometimes the endoscopy is not enough. And uh, the best way to evaluate uh, the submucosal recurrence is the MR with uh, uh, diffusion wave uh, sequences. So now we are routinely adapt, uh, use this, uh, this uh, policy in these uh, select cases. Now we jump to another problem. So the, the follow-up, uh, even uh, in very advanced cases, this is cases of the, uh, pharyngo, total pharyngolaryngectomy uh, with uh, a flapper reconstruction. And this is an endoscopy during the follow-up. And with MBI, we detect a very small recurrence in the boundaries between the flap and the mucosa. And uh, we, uh, MBI, you can appreciate uh, some dark spot in this uh, small recurrence. Uh, this gives us the possibility to treat endoscopically these small recurrence, uh, even in a very advanced, uh, uh, in a uh, huge operation uh, uh, for advanced cases. And this is the more challenge uh, uh, topics. Uh, of course, patients uh, who have been previously treated by uh, no surgical uh, policy uh, can have uh, some uh, post radiation uh, change in terms of mucositis, uh, uh, fibrosis, osteonecrosis uh, uh, that can be mistaken with a recurrence. It's very, it's more difficult to evaluate uh, uh, this change uh, due to the radiation uh, uh, compare a, a, a confounding element uh, in terms of uh, distinguished to, uh, from uh, recurrence. But uh, in this work, no difference was found uh, between uh, white light and BI with regard to the detection of uh, visible T1 and T4. But uh, it was uh, useful to evaluate uh, uh, some uh, uh, change in, uh, in terms of uh, premalignant or potential malignant tumor. Uh, so it, uh, even for uh, anatomical size, the MBI was superior to the white light in the detection of recurrence in the larynx and the hypopharynx more than the endoral cavity. We didn't have any evaluation about the larynx <coughs> in this uh, uh, paper. So, sorry, the picture is that D, is that abnormal? In uh, the uvula there. B. D, is that abnormal? D is normal. D is yeah, normal. normal. D is so normal. macroscopically, the difference is, uh, I mean, uh, in the majority of the cases, when uh, you have uh, some uh, well demarked uh, area right. with uh, uh, high density of dark spot is more uh, uh, indicative of recurrence. When you have a dark spot uh, all around, uh, it's not well demarked, uh, is uh, uh, in the majority of the case uh, due to the postatinic change. Uh, this is another. Um, uh, is oh, so brown spots everywhere is okay. Yeah, everywhere <laughs> is okay. Yeah. Brown yeah. spot in one small area is no good. Okay. And also the density is very important. <laughs> because they uh, uh, are more concentrated in one small area, usually. But only for superficial changes. The problem is that after radiotherapy, yeah. more of the time you have submucosal uh, recurrence. So the, is one of the reason of a false negative of MBI, submucosal recurrence, because you cannot detect uh, this, uh, the superficial change. This is uh, another paper written by Michael Zabrowski, and uh, show again that, that uh, the majority of recurrence uh, appears uh, in the first two years. So you have to concentrate uh, every fourth uh, in the first two years, because uh, you have uh, 
more possibility to detect the lesion in this period and maybe to, to avoid the total laryngectomy. You have uh, still the possibility to perform uh, some uh, conservative surgery in terms of laser or open partial horizontal laryngectomy. And uh, he showed again that, that uh, the combination between uh, 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 with uh, MBI and uh, HDDV because it's important when the, you, uh, we, uh, we, are spoken, we are speaking about MBI that you have to keep in mind that the, the value of MBI is uh, amplified if you, if you combine with uh, HDDV. So it's important the combination of high definition and magnification with MBI. Was uh, higher in terms of sensibility, specificity, uh, all this stuff uh, compared to the uh, normal uh, uh, um, uh, MBI, a white light, of course. And this is another uh, paper written by us where we uh, uh, confirm again the, the value of the magnification MBR compared to the white light or single MBI in different uh, anatomical uh, uh, sites uh, treated uh, uh, previously with uh, radiotherapy and uh, uh, chemo red. Okay, this is uh, some uh, example uh, just to clarify uh, your uh, doubts. So uh, when you, this in the same patient, you can see some disarrangement due to the postatinic effect, but if you look here, this is the recurrence. So in the same patient, you can appreciate recurrence of a disarrangement of the vessel. Again, these dilated vessels are due to the postatinic effect. By contrast, you have a well demarked area with dark spot where there is some superficial recurrence. This again is one superficial recurrence. You have a very high density in well the market area. By contrast, in this case, you have some dilated uh, uh, tortuous vessel, but it's due to the post effect. So every time you have a, a radiotherapy, of course, the vascularity changes because you have some fibrosis you have uh, some uh, dilated vessel, yes. but... Uh, I thought the red one circle was bad, but you said it's normal. Normal, this oh, was okay. normal. The recurrence was here. Ah, okay. This is the, uh, is the classic uh, disarrangement post -tinic. The vessel becomes tortuous okay. and dilated. So regarding uh, the, uh, the follow-up, the radiological follow-up, this is important to detect submucosal recurrence that can be missed by endoscopy. So after radiotherapy, no way. The, the endoscopy is useful only for detection of superficial recurrence, but are very rare. The majority are submucosal. So you can appreciate the superficial change of the vascularity, but in the majority of the cases, you perform radiotherapy, chemo red in advanced yeah. cases, so you have to, it, yeah. to combine always the two information. And uh, of course, uh, you have also to combine in this case uh, with PET, because uh, you, you have to, to see also the probably your secondary primary tumor. It is important that the, the PET must be performed after at least after 12 weeks to avoid uh, the high number of false positive oh, due yeah. to inflammation. Oh, really. too, and uh, if you perform uh, uh, MR in between, of course, uh, the diffusion weight uh, uh, go beyond because they give more information uh, about the only uh, uh, the simple MRI. So in summary, for radiological uh, workup, you can uh, uh, see the difference uh, and the advantages, the pro and cons of uh, uh, CT compared to MRI. 
Uh, of course, uh, the CT a very short acquisition time compared to MRI. No whole patient wants to stay in the tube for a long time. Uh, there is less motion artifact compared to MRI. And uh, uh, sometimes it's better to have a, a good quality CT compared to low quality of MRI. But in terms of uh, diffusion pattern, of course, the MRI is superior when you want to compare the, the spreading toward the visceral spaces or some information about the um, uh, infiltration the ringen framework. So, uh, in, in particular, if you uh, look at uh, this criteria for uh, a CAT infiltration, you have to keep in mind that in sequence T2, and T1 con gadolinium, the cartilage has higher senior than tumor, means that you have a peritumor inflammation. By contrast, if you have a, a similar senior uh, between a cartilage and tumor, is uh, more, uh, uh, the probability to have infiltration by the tumor is uh, higher. Okay, thank you for your attention. I want uh, uh, um, Thank uh, uh, everybody uh, for this, uh, 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 to spend uh, two days uh, together and uh, also Theo for, uh, and the uh, Olympus staff for the hospitality and for the invitation. Thank you again. <laughs> Some question? Yeah. Um, so you, to summarize. No, that's good. <laughs> uh, Six months. How yes. How long do you? Would you two remember? years. Two years. So yeah. at you least the for the for, for uh, examination, radiologic examination. But uh, I really I don't know. Do you perform a TLM very often? Yes. Yeah. Do you perform a, a endoscopic uh, resection? Uh, so, yes. Yeah, the this is. T1. Uh, no, T1. You don't you don't care yeah, about yeah, the we, T1 we because it is a low risk. Uh, we, we yeah. Yeah, depends. I, I guess our ours, if the anterior commissure, yeah. so we prefer the radiator. Yes, We're so, sure so, we so you have a... We're not sure we can get a good margin. Uh, okay, margin. okay. If you don't perform uh, any, I mean, advanced uh, TLM, yeah. uh, endoscopy is enough because uh, you have just to evaluate uh, the superficial spreading and the mucosal changes. Yeah. So. Uh, while light MBI is the best way yes. to follow the patient, no way. But uh, if you push a little bit your indication yeah. and uh, you include in uh, your uh, selection criteria also patient uh, with T2 uh, with uh, uh, deep involvement of the muscle, with impairment of the mobility, or even uh, with the paraglottic space involvement, mean T3, in this case, I suggest always to combine <coughs> imaging for examination in the first two years because uh, we observe that 40% of these patients yeah. have submucosal recurrence. So this happens very often because uh, sometimes uh, uh, you have a close margin and deep mar close deep margin yeah. and uh, the, the uh, recurrence, yeah. uh, uh, you have recurrence in the scar tissue and you cannot appreciate it superficially. So you keep in mind that the false negative of MBI are the majority of the cases due to some diseases in the subocausal space. And when you face it with this situation, MRI is the best way because it is the, uh, the best examination to distinguish between scar tissue fibrosis and a tumor. You can uh, play different uh, combination with DVI and so on. What's, what's in the paraglide? Oh, sorry. Play. Oh, no, keep going. Yeah, ah. What's this in the paraglide space though? How do you get a margin? I, I, perform, a, I perform a super resection. resection. So I remove also the in, inner perichondrium right. uh, endoscopically. So uh, the, the only, I mean the selection criteria for T3, for TLM, uh, is uh, 
uh, no infiltration of the cartilage, so the tumor must be included uh, in the paraglottic space. Uh, you have not to be fixation of the arachnoid, because the fixation of, uh, of the hydra means that uh, the tumor involves the cricoarachnoid joint. And this is a very tricky area because uh, you have the diffusion toward uh, the, the pariform sinus. Uh, and uh, in uh, all kind of uh, conservative surgery, your uh, uh, results decline when you have the fixation of the arachnoid. So probably this is not the right, the, the yeah. correct indication for conservative surgery. It's much better maybe some non-surgical yeah. procedure. Um, just two questions. Yeah. The first one is related to partial laryngectomies because so today? Pa partial laryngectomies. Ah, partial in there. But you in mean endoscopy or open? No, no, open. Open. So yeah. in, in, in my experience, the performance of this particular set of procedures is really only ever being done in France now. No, nowhere else really does that. Do you perform that kind of procedure? Oh, yes. Very often? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. We the indications change for like... Yes, the indication, the main indication we... Uh, last month we published on uh, head and neck yeah. one uh, revision about uh, f more than 400 uh, open partial uh, horizontal laryngectomy according to the new classification of the ELS yeah. that uh, divide the conservative surgery in uh, OPG, uh, OPHL, yeah. open partial horizontal laryngectomy type one, it was the old uh, supraglottic laryngectomy yeah. Type 2, that is supracricoid laryngectomy. Type 3, that is supratracheal laryngectomy. And, and, and your workup involves like lung function tests. But the worst situation is the fixation of the cricoarytenoid joint. Right. So when uh, you have to divide a uh, tumor in the anterior compartment, a tumor in the posterior compartment, the uh, um, larynx. In the anterior compartment, uh, are very good indication even for T4 because even if the tumor going out of the larynx you have the comparable result of total laryngectomy. It is a worse result when you have a posterior involvement because you have a higher recurrence rate compared to the total laryngectomy. Do you, do you find, what's your aspiration rates for your patients? Because we don't uh, depend we don't it depends if you keep uh, one arytenoid, two arytenoid. There are many. Uh, uh, if you keep, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, the whole label procedure, I mean, without epiglottis, uh, with only one uh, arytenoid? <coughs> I, I don't know. Uh, we have not. Yeah. I mean, partial laryngectomy is rare. Yes, I mean, partial laryngectomy is a big family. It depends on which kind of partial laryngectomy we are talking about. Um, any, like we, I, I, mean, I can't think of any I've done. For I I don't, it, it's important, it's mandatory, no important, yeah. to spare the sensibility. Yeah. So you have to pay attention to, to spare always the superior laryngeal nerve. Because if you damage the superior laryngeal nerve, you uh, negative uh, influence the swelling, of course, yeah. because you lose the sensibility, the sensation. The sensation. Yeah. So this is a key that uh, you have to keep in mind. Then uh, you have to remove the track as soon as possible, right. yeah. uh, as uh, the French school uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. teach. Yeah. After four or five days, uh, you have to remove the, the track because the track block uh, the, uh, the larynx. So then you have uh, not to, to use uh, the cuff. I mean, uh, with the cuff, the patient, uh, the same day of the operation, the night with the cuff, because the cuff uh, um, uh, inhibits, inhibit, uh, reduces the sensibility of the subglottis, and also uh, in, uh, reduces the possibility to cuff. Uh, so if you keep uh, the cuff, uh, you reduce the possibility to to <coughs> to. Well, the, uh, 
Yeah, yes. And, and the second question is, do you use NDI for um, non-malignant disease, so autoimmune disease in the larynx, assessment of that? Is it like, uh, a, like a benign lesion, you mean? Yeah, so benign, like cancer. No, it's not so useful, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I use it for papillomatosis just to see uh, satellite lesion, but uh, for uh, inflammatory diseases, uh, I mean, it's not uh, really. I mean, I, I yeah, it's uh, yeah, just yeah. to see the morphology, but uh, for didactic uh, reason, not uh, for. Uh, well, I have a couple of patients who have hemophilus of the larynx. Ah, yes. And they, but. And they have IVG and all these other very expensive treatments, and we have to write letters to the government to get. But uh, I, I, I show yesterday that uh, uh, it was reported also by Isabel de la Seca that the, the number of false negative was related to submucosal recurrence and no cancer lesion, mm -hmm. like uh, no squamous cell carcinoma right. lesion. Even uh, if you face with uh, lymphoma, paraganglioma, uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma, the features of the MBI are not uh, so typical. So uh, you can make a mistake in diagnosis. But because uh, most of the, the patient uh, have a sumocosal disease, uh, you cannot appreciate any superficial changes. So is uh, the, the most important advantage is, uh, again, superficial, preneoplastic, or early uh, carcinoma of the larynx and the upper adult digestive tract. This is the goal of the MBI. Do you have an experience with MRI PET? Um, MRI PET fusion? Ah, combined? Yeah. Uh, not, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I had in Brescia, because in Brescia there is a very good staff uh, of uh, radiologists, but uh, we have not uh, data uh, to show you or, or to compare uh, with, uh, I mean, uh, PET or, or uh, normal MRI. But uh, I know that they're doing that, but uh, until now, there is not uh, evidence. I don't know about you. We you, have it here. Yeah, you, you, you find I'm this. I'm not uh, using it, but. Uh, 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 we, we have, but uh, we don't use it.